For the semester project, you need to design a business application using computer vision for embedded systems. Please read the assignment requirements for more details. What should your project do? Let's consider a concept called technology readiness level. This concept was proposed by NASA. There are nine levels of technology readiness. The first level is called the basic principles observed and reported. Level two means technology concept and application formulated. For your semester project, you need to focus on level one and level two. Your report needs to explain what's the technology concept and the application. You do not have to move to level three or higher. Level three means analytical and experimental critical function prove a concept. Level four means component and breadboard validation in laboratory setting. Level five means the validation is conducted in relevant environment. For the semester project, you need to understand the concept of a business model generation. Your report needs to explain the important component in business models. This book, Business Model Generation, creates a concept called the Business Model Canvas. This canvas has nine important questions. At the middle is called variable proposition. On the left side are key activities and key resources. On the right side are customer relationships channels. On the far left side is the key partners. On the far right side is the customer segment. At the bottom is cost structure and revenue streams. I will explain more details later. Here are a few common mistakes when people think about business and technologies. I already explained, you don't need an idea, you need to identify a problem. When people think about ideas, they usually refer to as solutions. You don't need a solution, not yet. You need to identify an important problem your solution will very likely change as you understand the problem further. You need to be careful not to be too confident. I have talked to some potential entrepreneurs. They believe they were right and everybody else was wrong. That is a dangerous approach because if everyone else is wrong, that means also the customers are wrong. If customers are wrong, they do not understand your product, they will not purchase your product. Technology people often believe better technologies will have a better business. That is not always true. Sometimes people prefer easier technologies even though it is not better. Another common misunderstanding is you need to be the first to succeed. This is a dangerous approach because if you are the first, you may not have customers. Customers do not understand the needs yet. Another common mistake is to move fast. This is also dangerous because if you move too fast and your products are not ready yet, you may damage your reputation and customers may not trust you anymore. When I talk to some potential entrepreneurs, they often say the first thing they worry about is to raise money. That is also a common mistake. If you identify an important problem and you have the skills to solve those problems, investors will come to find you. It is great if you can go to attend business competitions. It's even better if you can win competitions. However, winning competition is only a good start. It does not mean you'll be successful building a business. There are many other factors involved. When you think about business, you need to ask what is the problem. This is a very common misunderstanding when people mix problems with potential solutions. Let's consider a few examples. People need transportation. People need to go from one place to another place. Maybe they need to meet friends. Maybe they need to see family members. Maybe they need to talk to their business partners. They need transportation. Transportation can be accomplished by many ways, such as rental car, Uber or Lyft, taxi, bus, bicycle, or even walk. You have to understand people's need is transportation. In many cases, people don't really care about the method of transportation. They do not necessarily care about it's a rental car or taxi. 
as long as they can get to their destination easily and safely. Another problem is communication. People can communicate in many different ways, such as mobile phone, video call. People can also send FedEx or letters. You have to understand the problem, for example, how urgent it is. If it is urgent, people may want to talk by mobile phone. If it's not urgent, it may be okay for people to send letters. The third example is how to acquire knowledge. People want to learn things, but they do not have to go to universities. They may learn things online using edX, Coursera, or they can go to library and read books. You have to understand the problems people want to solve before you jump into a particular solution. Steve Blank is an expert about how to identify the right problems to solve. I encourage you to visit Steve Blank's website. He has many wonderful videos about how to identify the right problems. It is important to identify the right problem because you can eliminate the problem at the same time. The worst case scenario is you spend many months or even years solving wrong problems. If you follow Steve Blank's approach, you need to talk to potential customers. You need to ask them the right questions. Here are a few suggestions. You can start with Purdue alumni and ask them questions, ask them to share their experience with you. Your goal is to understand the problems from their viewpoint. It's not the problem you want to solve. You should ask them open-ended questions. What bothers you in your everyday life or what bothers you in your business? Start with big open-ended questions so that they can focus on the most important problems first. Then you want to ask them how the problems are solved right now. Maybe the existing solutions are good enough. In that case, you don't need to solve the problem. If they explain the existing solutions are not good enough, you want to ask them the deficiency of existing solutions. In this process, you want to talk to as many people as possible. You want to talk to users. But users are not necessarily decision makers. You come to a classroom, you sit on a chair. You are the user of the chair, but you did not make the purchase decision of this chair. This chair is purchased by the university. If your product is a chair for a classroom, you need to talk to the users, make sure the users feel comfortable. You also need to talk to the decision makers and understand their requirements. After you talk to an individual, ask the person to give you additional names you can talk to. Maybe they're friends, maybe they're own customers, maybe their suppliers, maybe potential competitors. You want to collect as much information as possible before you jump in and solve a particular problem. Here are a few things you should avoid. Don't talk to your friends or family members because they will naturally bias to tell you you are perfect. These people will not help you identify the right problems. Instead, they will simply tell you whatever you want to do is great. You don't want to ask people to confirm your hypothesis. You don't want people to tell you the problem you want to solve is the right problem because that information doesn't help you. Instead, you want people to tell you your hypothesis are wrong and you can adjust your hypothesis. Earlier, I have already explained the difference between users and decision makers. You should talk to users. You should also talk to decision makers because they may have a different factors to consider. Do not assume users are buyers. I would explain users are not necessarily buyers. After you identify a problem, you should start thinking about how you could solve the problem. One way to explain this is to use the concept called storyboard. This is an example of a storyboard. In a storyboard, you have to answer the following questions. Who are these people? Who are your users? Who are the decision makers? The second question is, what do they want? What is the problem they, they are facing? Why are their desire not fulfilled? Why are the current solutions not good enough? How do they handle the situation right now? 
are they satisfied with existing solutions even though the existing solutions are not perfect? Can you do anything for them? How will your solution change their lives? What will happen after they have your solutions? A marginal improvement or is a significant improvement? If you cannot tell a story, you really don't know what you're doing. For a course project, you need to deliver two things. In, at the end of week two, you need to have a proposal. You need to explain the business needs and the, your proposed solution. Before the semester ends, you need to give a presentation explaining the business needs and the technology solutions. This is a design project. You do not have to build your solution. In week three, you can submit an adjustment of your proposal. Here are a few suggestions. First, do not treat this as a submit and forget assignment, as most assignments. Most students forget what they have done after they submit their assignments. I encourage you to treat this assignment as the beginning of your career. Think about what you want to do in the next five years, in the next 10 years. Use this assignment as the beginning of your career. You are strongly encouraged to discuss, discuss with your classmate, discuss with me, discuss with alumni. Talk to as many people as possible. I encourage you to join the Burton D. Morgan Business Model Competition. You will hear from business experts about how to formulate problems. Purdue has many resources for commercialization. I already mentioned i is one of them. I encourage you to take advantage of the resources. Focus on one key problem and think deeply. Don't try to do too many things. This is a common mistake. People try to do many things without doing anything well. You need to think deeply about how to solve one problem well. Read books about successful business. These stories about successful entrepreneurs can usually be inspiration to your project. There are industrial consortiums focusing on efficient computer vision for embedded systems, such as TinyML and HAI. You can go to their website and find out which companies are their members, ask what kind of business these companies are doing. From there, you can discover business opportunities.